first we create our buildings then our buildings create us i read this quote by winston churchill when i was 9 years old and i wondered in order to shape us create us buildings need to be living personalities can buildings have an impact on us and change the way we feel can we have a living relationship with our buildings the way we have with people buildings can be sustainable and intrinsically smart i shared this idea in my previous talk at tedx assi today let us explore the idea can a building be a person buildings are living entities playing an active role in our development i see them as people this fort is a warrior heroic robust protective this palace a king royal and eminent the sydney opera a ballerina graceful and expressive recently on a heritage walk of pondicherry with the usa ambassador to india i explained to him this japanese style minimalist building in the middle of colonial french villas by saying here is a zen monk meditating among french aristocrats this idea of personifying a building humanizing architecture inspired me to develop buildings with personalities people can connect with today let me share with you three examples building as a mother building as a teacher building as an entrepreneur building as a mother our mother is the most important person in our life because she has given us this life she has nurtured us and the most important place in our life is our home can our home be our mother can our home nourish us the way our mother does this is the idea i explored in the design of oroma french villamens a residential community near oroville in south india one of the most striking qualities of a mother is harmony she harmonizes the various elements of our life to achieve our overall growth here the design harmonizes the various elements of nature the earth from below the sun from above water and wind all work in harmony it was a barren land just 5 years ago today it is a thriving lush green community in the lap of nature use of natural materials like earth and timber and a design which keeps the interiors cool and comfortable in spite of the hot climate the buildings are harvesting the rooftop rainwater we are ecologically treating the wastewater and upcycling it for gardening and landscaping the residents come together compost their own kitchen waste turn it into organic manure and grow their own food harnessing solar power the names of the villas are based on qualities of a mother to me my mother represents courage this is my home villa courage the centerpiece of the whole design is a meditation hall built out of the very earth on which it stands being inside it is like being in the womb of mother earth with this shaft of sunlight as the umbilical cord connecting you to the sun when our homes become our mother they nourish us make us feel secure and harmonized with ourselves they bring out the best in us the second example is of a building as a teacher here is a school that i have designed in central india schools are places of learning they can be places of delight of discovering the world around us as we are growing up 
When I was in school, I used to be a voracious reader. I spent long hours in the library sitting next to the window reading. My favorite teacher Jayashree Miss sensed my hunger for knowledge. One day, she came and sat next to me, pointed through the window to the sky and said, knowledge is like the sky, it is infinite. That day, she made me leap out of myself, break all ceilings and reach for the skies. When I started designing this school building, I remembered her and asked myself, can this school building be my favorite teacher? I designed the main concept around a central circular courtyard onto which all facilities open. This courtyard is open to sky. The students here don't need to break the ceiling because there is none. They are inspired to reach for the skies. Students start learning design concepts integrated in the building. For example, they learn about angles, not by a diagram on a board, but by opening a door. They learn about water conservation by using a glass tank which is calibrated. So they see the level of the water going down as they use it through the day and know if they have wasted any. They learn about distances and space by numbers, feet and meters painted on the floor. This makes them conscious while walking and they become aware of their growing stride length. They learn about time, not by a wall clock, but by observing the changing shadows of the sundial in the courtyard. When I shared dozens of these concepts with the students, they were so enthused. They started collaborating with more ideas. This developed such a sense of ownership among them for their upcoming school. When our school becomes our teacher, it brings forth the wonder of a child in us. The third example is of a building as an entrepreneur. We are living in exciting times of startups and unicorns and enterprises flourishing worldwide. Entrepreneurship has redefined our business world, our workspaces. Here is the Jagrati Enterprise Center, a business incubator in North India for budding entrepreneurs who want to be nation builders, who want to build India through enterprise. When I started designing this building, I asked myself, can this building do what the entrepreneur does? Can it become a catalyst in the growth of the enterprise? I mapped the inner journey of the entrepreneur from idea to enterprise as the outer journey through the building, made each milestone in the entrepreneur's journey into a building. The first stage is where the entrepreneur is clarifying the idea for her enterprise by meeting other fellow entrepreneurs and mentors. This milestone became the multipurpose hall. The next one is where she is team building, working together. This milestone became the co-working spaces, the offices, the conference room, library, prototyping labs. The next milestone is where she is assuming a leadership role in her enterprise, guiding from the front. This became the director's office. The entrepreneur anchors the vision of the enterprise for her whole team. Here, the site has this beautiful 200-year-old large banyan tree. This tree holds a special place in our hearts because it is the national tree of India, a living symbol of India. I made this tree the epicenter of the design. So when the entrepreneur crosses the various milestones of her journey, which have been personified as buildings, she finally emerges ready to take on the challenge of building India through enterprise. And when she does that, she comes face to face with her aim, India, the banyan tree. I believe that our workspaces 
where we spend more than half of our waking day can embody our journeys, anchor our visions, become a catalyst in our creative growth. So how does personifying architecture benefit us? This happened on my first building site a few years ago. We were to build a community development center located in some of the most impoverished villages which were considered alcoholic in South India. We decided to make the very act of building this center a means of development for the surrounding villages by training the local unskilled villagers by building this center for them and with them. On the first day, I remember, I was surrounded by 40 local alcoholic men. <laughs> it was then that I understood the challenge that, had, that I had taken up for myself. I had to attune them to the purpose of the center. So I shared with them a little story which my father had told me when I was growing up. There is a busy building site and a curious passerby wants to know what is going on. He steps in and asks some of the workers, what is it that you're doing? One of the workers says, I'm earning my daily wage. The second one says, I'm a bricklayer, I'm laying bricks. The third one proudly points out to the building rising from the ground behind him and says, I am building a temple to my Lord. I shared this story with the villagers and said, here too, we are going to build a temple to our Lord. But not the Lord that we shall install in the form of a deity, but to that inner perfection that resides within each one of us. A few months later, I found these villagers gathered in a circle in a quiet meditation on the building site. After a few minutes, one of them picked up a book which I had gifted him the previous month on his birthday. He opened it at a random page and started reading a passage in which the author has described the difference between need and greed. These were so-called alcoholic, illiterate, wife-beating men. And here they were discussing the most difficult comparison around the world, need versus greed. I stood back thinking, how is he going to explain this difference, which perhaps nobody can explain to any audience in the world? How is he going to explain it to these workers? After reading the passage, he sealed the explanation in one line by saying, need is curry and rice, greed is chicken and mutton. A few months later, the wives of these construction workers, these men, they started coming to me saying, please do not allow my husband to leave your building site. Because ever since, <laughs> ever since he has joined here, he has stopped drinking, stopped beating, and started contributing money to our children's education. Construction, as we all know, is a male-dominated industry around the world. Yet, there is something remarkable that the feminine in us, in each one of us, can achieve. The balance between the yin and the yang, between operating from the head and flowing from the heart. When I asked these workers, what is it that has brought about this profound change in you, that your wives are telling me this? They said, when you told us that we are going to build this temple as the body of our God, we decided to become worthy of it. We decided to make our best come forth. Buildings have the power to transform our environments. And as Winston Churchill said, shape us, shape our communities. The way the design of our chair determines our physical posture, the design of our environments determines our emotional state. Buildings impact us emotionally and a collective emotional impact becomes a social impact. 
We spend more than 80% of our lives inside buildings. Why can't buildings be life enriching? The next time you enter a building, ask yourself, what role would I like this building to play for me? If this building were a person, who would it be? Can our home be our mother and nourish us? Can our school be our teacher and bring forth the wonder of a child in us? Can our workspace be an entrepreneur and bring out the creative best in us? I believe they can. The purpose of architecture is to unfold the human genius in us. The way every mother knows that her children will outlive her, we know that our buildings will outlive us. They form our ecological and social ecosystems, our shared legacy. We love our people not because of who they are, but because of who we are when we are with them. Similarly, we love our buildings because of who we become when we are in them.